and sit with technology, but on the issue of uh, free speech and online safety when it comes to the big social media players. So leading our next conversation is the wonderful CNBC anchor, Tanya Breyer, and her very special guest. So a big round of applause, please, for Tanya. Nice to see you again, Ms. Breyer. How are you doing? <laughs> Very well. Oh, so lovely me. to see you. Right. Lovely to see uh, exit you. Lovely the stage. to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Emma. Hello, everyone. As Emma said, I have a very special guest. Please welcome Hella Thorning Schmidt, co chair of the Oversight Board and former Prime Minister of Denmark. Here she is. <laughs> Hella, thank you so much for joining me. It just wouldn't be the same without talking to you here. At is tradition at the World Economic Forum, Hella. And of course, we have the theme, cooperation in a free world. Is there any hope that action can be here at the forum? And what do you hope will come out of it? I always believe that this year we can do it. We are at the start of the new year. We will be able to collaborate and work together. But I also think what we're discussing at, at, at this particular World Economic Forum is, uh, is like a mixture of different crises that actually inter, in, intertwines with each other and, and exacerbates each other. We call this the polycrisis Davos because there are so many. And I do think that we are at a very difficult time in our history. We have the crisis, uh, the war in, Euro in Europe, we have climate crisis, we have a poverty uh, crisis, uh, we have many different crises, that actually inflation, so we have many different crises. But what else can we do than keep working on this? Keep working on bringing all the forces that we have here in Davos, but globally as well, together to try to find solutions, and that is, politics, it's philanthropy, uh, it's private uh, business and capital, that all has to work together to solve all these various crises. But Helen, of course, there are critics that will say, well, what is the point of Davos? It's elitist. Does anything get done? But you come year after year. I believe in dialogue. I believe in dialogue. And I don't think that any of the the problems that we are facing or the challenges that we have can be solved without dialogue. I understand younger folks that they want to demonstrate, that they want to put on their placards and do their demonstration. I truly understand it. But in order to really solve problems, we have to come together, all of us, to try to work together, talk together, understand new things. And if there is a place in the world where you actually do that, it is Davos. I, I accept that people think it's an elitist place, but there are also many NGOs, many different interests uh, in Davos that get to speak to leaders that they would not normally be in contact with and get to put their case and their solutions in front of leaders who have the funding and the um, access to change things. So I think that is the, the, the power of Davos. And I always ask the question when people say we are coming together and it's meaningless, would it be better if we didn't meet? Would it be better if we didn't have that conversation and try to build those bridges? So Davos, for me, is about building bridges and trying to find solutions, all of us together. Well, Hello, of course, one of the big issues is freedom of speech, misinformation. And you're co-chair of the Oversight Board that looks at Facebook and Instagram to make sure that there's no hate speech. Tell me about the process. The Oversight Board is uh, something that uh, Meta, formerly known as Facebook, uh, set in place uh, two years ago. I've been working on it for, for three years, and it's basically to try to find a new mechanism uh, for taking the most difficult content decisions on Facebook and Instagram. In the old days, it was basically up to Mark Zuckerberg to take the decisions of what remains on the platforms, what comes down. Now, then Mark Zuckerberg said, I, I shouldn't be doing this on my own uh, or with my team. And that's why uh, Meta has created this independent uh, board, oversight board, that takes the most difficult decisions where Meta can refer cases to us or where users can actually come directly to us when they have been through the Meta system. And I do think that we are changing the way people think about content moderation and making sure that the decisions on content moderations are taken on a, on a basis of human rights 
rather than in, on the basis of the interest of the company. And I do think you see the stark difference right now between what Meta is doing on Instagram and, and Facebook and what other companies who are actually backtracking in terms of their resources for content moderations are doing right now. So I'm, I think this is an experiment. We all know that. But it's starting to look like we can create real change in the way that Meta is uh, organizing their, their content moderation, which is about doing it in a principled way, but also doing it with, uh, with, with transparency, which is what we've been lacking for so long. Has it been a more challenging role than you've anticipated? We knew from the start. I was engaged right from the start when this was just an idea uh, in, in, in Facebook uh, as it was then. So we knew from the start that we wouldn't get the easy decisions. We would get the most difficult uh, decisions to, to decide on. So we knew from the start it would be difficult. And it has been just that. It is difficult. We are uh, a board which is extremely global. Uh, obviously, we work, uh, as everyone has, else has done, on Zoom. We try to take these decisions. Uh, this week, we're also coming out with some really interesting uh, decisions. So we, we really try to see everything from every angle. And on the basis, the, our, our fundamental basis for taking decisions is human rights. And why is that important? That is because everyone believes in free speech. We wouldn't be uh, ha on this oversight board if we didn't believe in free speech. But everyone also understands that there is a time where my free, free speech can uh, involve in real life danger to, to you or another person. And where there is a crossover with hate, hate speech and uh, real eminent danger for a person, uh, where free speech has to be... Um, uh, some, some, sometimes free speech has to be limited a little bit if it's actually da endangering another person. So that is the balance that we are trying to strike all the time. But Helen, what do you say to those that say, well, it's funded by Meta, it's an in-house agency, and it's a bit of netwashing? How do you respond to those? Well, we're not in-house. We are completely independent. Meta has put their funding into an, a fund that is then funding us. So I got actually nothing to do uh, with Meta. Obviously, we are on Meta's back all the time because we want them to uh, implement our decisions, which they are doing. We want them to implement uh, all our recommendations, and we are watching them daily to see if they're doing that. So we are dis talking and discussing with Meta all the time, but I feel completely free of, from Meta. I don't have to look at their Im economic in interest. They can't get rid of me if they don't like the decisions that we, we make. So I feel completely independent, and I think they tried as best as you can mm because it is funded by Meta, to actually push that independence. So I think it's very hard to say that we are in the pockets of, of Meta. We, we don't act like that. We, our decisions really annoy Meta sometimes because they have to change the way they have done things. Uh, and we are pushing Meta to be more transparent about how they take decisions and what principles they are applying. But I also have to say that content moderation is really, really difficult because of the scale uh, of content because of all these uh, competing principles. So it is very, very difficult. So I understand why Meta and all the other social media platforms have got us so wrong so many times. Uh, and we are trying to help them to, to not get us so wrong. Can't it be called subjective, though, because it's just about what the board feels? You're making the decisions at the end of the day. And shouldn't more regulation be introduced? We should definitely have more regulation, and the European Union are now introducing more regulation, the Digital Services Act, which uh, I think is a very exci exciting piece of regulation, and we will try to help them with that as well if we, if we can. Uh, so yes, more regulation, but I also think we have to be very, very clear that it will never be a good idea that states and government are regulating what can be on social media. And we have to think about this because uh, dictatorships so or any autocratic uh, leadership are actually really keen to get into content moderation. There's so much they want to take out for minorities, for groups that they don't agree with. It's really something that uh, uh, dictators want to do. So we always have to be careful to give the responsibility of content moderation to state actors or uh, government actors. So that's why we have to find a mixture of legislation, yes, but also independent regulation, independence uh, as we are in the oversight that can take these decisions 
based on principles. It's, it is subjective, of course, but it's based on principles. Uh, and more, more importantly, it's based on transparency. All our decisions can be seen on our website. You can go through them in minute detail. We always take public comments when we make a decision. We always announce this is the decision. What we, this is um, the case that we are taking. Invite public comments, and some decisions we get many po public comments. And I think that's also a, a way of ensuring engagement and transparency. Well, talking of which, the big decision, of course, is former pe President Trump. Reports say he'll likely be reinstated to Facebook and Instagram. Are they correct? We have been in contact with Meta over the last couple of weeks where they are telling us that they are looking into this now. So I don't know what Meta is going to do. Uh, what is encouraging to me is that two years ago when uh, the oversight board decided uh, on this case, uh, on uh, removing uh, Trump from uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, we gave a long list of reasons why we thought yeah. Meta actually did the right thing, but also, more importantly, a long list of things that Meta had to improve. So what I'm understanding that Meta is thinking about now is to use the protocol that we gave them to actually form as a basis of their decision. So I don't know what they're deciding, but I'm very encouraged by the fact that they're using the advice that we gave them two years ago in their considerations. Like they also say that they used our advice, our protocol, if you wish, or our playbook uh, when they uh, decided what to do in the Brazilian election, where I think Meta has actually fared a little bit better than other social media companies because they had a playbook or a protocol that we helped them uh, develop. When can we expect a decision on former President Trump? And so, Helen, isn't it surely the Oversights Board say? It is not our say. We swiftly gave it back to Meta. We, don't, we have given Meta principles. We have given them a protocol. So it's still so their it's decision back to in the Meta. end. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if we will look at this again, but we have actually... One of the things we told Meta back then was that they couldn't take arbitrary decisions. They had to follow their own thinking about sanctions. They, had to follow, they couldn't give... Uh, special treatment to some uh, users of Facebook and Instagram. They couldn't take. They couldn't just make the rules up as they were going along. And I think they have learned from that. So the the, the considerations they have now is based on principle rather than just a, a spur of the moment. So that is what we have encouraged. So they will see when they take the decision. I, I think it'll be quite soon because we've been in contact with them recently. But I don't know, and I don't know which decision they will take. Do you feel he should be reinstated? We felt we were very uh, clear back then about um, not doing, not, not taking arbitrary decisions, and not also understanding the context that you are working in. So I don't want to have an opinion about that because I think it's up to Meta to have the opinion, and I think it would be wrong of me as a, a co-chair of the oversight board to have an opinion. What I want is for Meta to follow our protocol and put, follow our advice on not doing this in an arbitrary way, but actually following, following certain principles. And I really expect them to do that. And we will be watching them. Uh, we, don't want, we will be watching how they get to this uh, decision. Uh, we will, of course, issue a statement once they have uh, given their uh, position on this. And we will be watching them to see if they follow the protocol that we ask them to follow. What advice do you have for Elon Musk and his governance of Twitter? <laughs> uh, where do I start and how long we got? Um, I, I am the fir of the firm belief that you cannot have social media these days unless you have also firm content moderation. You have to ha have content moderation because there's so much hatred and there's so much real life danger that can happen from, from a, a post on social media. So any platform has to have content moderation. So I would encourage uh, Twitter to uh, upscale their content moderation. I was told, I don't know if it's true, I was told that, or I read, uh, that they actually removed content moderation uh, in, from Brazil, content moderators from Brazil, and I, I cannot see that that could be the right strategy to dealing with a contentious election like the one we had in uh, Brazil. So first of all, that. The other thing I advise all social media companies to, to do now is to get an independent oversight board. I really think we are proving uh, now that we can change meta, the way they think about these things, the principal way they come to it, but most of all, transparency for users 
And I want users to know what's going on on social media. And I encourage all social media platforms to have more transparency and do something like an oversight board, an independent oversight board, because that's the only way we can get more transparency. Hella, I just finally want to ask you, going back to your role as the former Prime Minister of Denmark, recently, of course, the Social Democrats, the party that you led as Prime Minister, struck a deal for a coalition government with right-wing liberals and moderates. The deal means increased military spending and cuts to social services. Are you worried about these developments? Uh, no, I am not. I think uh, I've always been in, in favour of collaboration. My whole political life, my whole life, is about building bridges. Uh, I, this is what I believe in strongly. That's why I'm here in Davos. That's why I wrote a big book last year about feminism and the Me Too movement. My whole life is about building bridges. And I do think that when you are in a crisis like we are now in, in Denmark, in the European countries, in many countries, it is about trying to build bridges. And I'm not saying this government uh, will not have difficulties. I think they will, because being in government in a, a uh, in a broad coalition is very difficult, but I do think the time is right to try to build bridges uh, across uh, the political spectrum. And if I look at the rest of the world, the US, for example, the UK, where I lived until recently, I don't see much good coming from people being further and further apart in the political system. So everywhere we can build bridges, I'm, I'm in favor. Are you worried about this nationalistic sentiment that's going around the world? I, I think there's a big difference between being a patriot and being uh, a, a populist nationalist. I'm a patriot myself. I love my own country. I love Europe. Uh, and I'm always a firm believer in, in these concepts. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with being a patriot. But, uh, but I also think we have to find a way where we can both be patriotical, but also uh, reach out and be global at the same time. So I, I hope that we can make that combination. And I think we can. And one thing we must not do when we talk about populism or nationalism is, is to start not hearing what other people are saying. I think there's too much of not listening, too much of not trying to understand where people are coming from. So even though it's someone from the far right, where I certainly do not belong politically, it is my job as a former politician and as a a, a leader now as well, to try to listen and understand other people because only then can you build real, real bridges. Hella thorning Schmidt, thank you so much for thank joining me. Thank you for me. having me, Tanya. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Bravo. <laughs>